What's going on? Uh, if you're new, my name is Cam. Welcome to the Print Life Tutorials. Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to set up your art for screen printing in Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to show you how to create a white underbase and apply an actual choke to it. Alright, before we actually get into separating this stuff and laying it all out, I just want to talk really briefly about the crappy side of this, which is the fact that there's certain things you're going to need. Some of them cost like quite a bit of money. So the first thing you're going to need is Adobe Illustrator. Any version will do. But, you know, some things may vary slightly depending on what version of Illustrator you got. Uh, number two, you're going to need Accurip or some form of a RIP software. Uh, Accurip is kind of the industry standard. Tons of people use it. I, I mean, the shitty thing about Accurip is it's like, I mean, it's like expensive as shit. I found workarounds on how to separate without it in Photoshop. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that someday, but for now, this tutorial, you need accurate. Uh, you're also going to need some form of Epson printer. Like, we use the 4800, great printer, and we have it converted to the Black Max or the All Black system, so it prints from single color, black graphics, onto film. And then finally, you're going to need waterproof film by the roll or by the sheet, whatever, depending on what you got. But you're going to need that stuff. Let's open the art in Illustrator. Before we actually dive into separating the art file, let's just take a quick second and set up our workspace on the Illustrator desktop. So uh, Adobe CC has these different, you know, you can set up different layouts for what you need, whether it's tracing, typography, or printing and proofing. Let's go ahead and select printing and proofing, but sometimes uh, you may not have that or for whatever reason you need to open your own windows. So let's show you how to open the things that we're going to need. Uh, First thing we're definitely going to need is the Pathfinder. So you're going to go up to Window, and you're going to select your Pathfinder. Okay, you see that pop up right there? Uh, the next thing you're also going to need is a Separation Preview, and it is open. Separations Preview, if it wasn't, just put a check mark next to that. This is our Separations Previewer right down here. Okay. Uh, typically, I'll get rid of all this crap just because we don't need it. Just take some space. Okay, so we got our Pathfinder. Uh, we got our swatches open and we got our overprint preview. We also want to open up one of our color books which actually holds our spot colors. So on the swatches window, you're going to go up here to the hamburger and you're going to open your swatch library and you're going to go to color books and you're going to look for the Pantone Plus Solid Coded book right here. Open that up. Now, the way you distinguish a spot color from your traditional CMYK process colors over here is you'll see the little white triangle in the bottom right corner and the black dot right in the middle. This just helps you visually reference and confirm that you are in fact using a spot color. So we have all the windows open we need. Uh, the next thing I always do on a separation is I want to clear out all of these process colors from my window. So I'll click the white. I'll hold down shift and I'm going to go all the way to the very last uh, color swatch and click. So I was holding shift and then I clicked. Selected them all and I'm going to hit the trash can. Uh, of course hit yes and that gets rid of all of our swatches. So this window over here shows our live colors or what is live on this particular artboard. And I'll show you why that's important here in a second. We have our graphic here. You'll notice that there's different elements all over the place in different layers. Um, I don't personally like to set up my art this way. I like to have each color on its own layer. But in this instance, we'll be okay. We got the desktop set up. Now we can dive into the separations. First thing we're going to do is select our red. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to select colors, and you can choose which way you like better. The first way in selecting red is going to be using our magic wand tool which is right over here on the toolbar. It actually, if you hover over it, it says Magic Wand. You can also hit the shortcut Y. Let's just select that, and we're going to select red. And the nice thing about this is it will now select everything that's red in this graphic as long as all of the red in this graphic uses the same shade of red, which conveniently in this one it does. So everything that's red is selected. Now we're going to pick our red spot color from over here in our Pantone Solid Coated Spot Color. But before we do that, you want to verify in the toolbar that the fill swatch is in front of the stroke swatch. Because you see right now the stroke is in front, so just click on the fill. 
and that pulls it to the front. Make sure you notice that. You're always gonna wanna confirm what you're filling right over here. Okay, so now we have the fill in front. We're gonna click the closest red spot that we that matches, whatever. We'll click this one. Now we filled the red in the artboard, and we'll just to confirm that we did in fact use a spot fill, if you look over here in the swatches window, you'll notice that this red spot swatch, you can see the little white triangle, has a white highlight around it. This means we did in fact fill the red in this graphic with a spot color. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is select uh, the next color in this graphic. But instead of using the magic wand tool, this time I'm gonna show you how to do it with the direct selection tool. So you're gonna come down here and we're gonna do the light gray. So click, click the first color, but you'll notice not everything else got selected. So another way to select everything in the artboard that's the same color is to come up here to select, click, and you're gonna select same, and you're gonna select fill color. Now we've selected all, everything on this artboard that is filled with that light gray. Notice right here, down here in the fill window in the toolbar, we do in fact have the light gray selected. It's also in front of the stroke. We're gonna come over here to our spot window and select the light gray. Notice that it did pop up in our swatches window. If it's highlighted, it's good to go. Okay, so those are the two different ways you can select. One, you can use the direct selection tool and select from the menu. The other one, you can use the magic wand tool and just click the color, it'll select everything. So you got options. Finally, I'm going to use the magic wand tool again to select the black in the graphic. I thought it, there we go. And let's just confirm that the fill is in front of the stroke here in the toolbar, which it is. Let's come over here to our spot swatch window and select the black. There we go. And let's confirm that I did in fact fill the black in this image with a spot. Yep, there's our black spot and it's highlighted in white. So it's selected, it's filled, we are good to go. So uh, before we go any further, let's go ahead and save as. You don't ever want to save your original art file. You want to save it as something else. So we're going to call this Never Quit Seps. Okay? All right, so we're saved as. We duplicated it. Uh, so we're safe. All right, we got all the spot colors applied. Now let's use the separation preview window just to make sure we got everything right. We can preview this using our overprint previewer right here. So the separations preview allows you to verify each individual color is in fact filled with a spot. When you're separating for films, you don't want your CMYK. So the first thing we're going to do is turn off, turn off the CMYK. Now notice because we did not fill the gray in this image, the background square, which is filled with light gray, we didn't fill that with a spot color. When we turn the CMYK colors off, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, the light gray disappears. It's because we did not fill that background with a spot color. We can now use our overprint previewer, our separations previewer, to verify that we did in fact fill all the colors in the graphic with a spot. So let's turn off the black, and notice that the black disappears from the artboard. If we turn off the light gray, and this light gray disappears. Red, red disappears. So I feel pretty confident in this. All right, let's dive into what I'm pretty sure you all have been waiting for, which is actually setting up this underbase and applying a choke to it. It's not actually that difficult. Let's, let's get started. It's actually quite simple. You just need to understand a few very basic principles. And the principles are, if you fill something with a spot color, uh, it will print out on its own film. And if you apply one of those CMYK process colors uh, and then deselect it from the print dialog, it will not print. Now that may not have made a lot of sense right now, but I'm gonna show you what to do and then why it makes sense here in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new layer. And we're going to call this layer underbase. Okay, now that we have our underbase, we're going to use our dirt selection tool. We're gonna to select everything in the graphic. Now we're going to hit Control C. This will copy everything on the artboard. And then we're going to select our underbase hit control F. Now we paste it in exactly the same spot. Now that we have everything pasted into our underbase layer, we're gonna select it all, and then we're going to use our Pathfinder tool to unite the entire object. And this will make it into one big solid block of color. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is apply our spot color. We come over to the tool toolbar, verify that our fill is in front of our stroke, which it is, and then we're going to just, I use a color that will be something other than white that we're not actually using in our main graphics. So for this one, I'm just going to use this kind of, this lemon yellow, this really light yellow, I don't know. Real quick, if you've made it this far, stop what you're doing, subscribe to the channel, hit like on the video, and then share it to all of your potential screen printing or just, actually, just share it on your social media for me because you're my friend and because I like you and I need you. All right, let's get back to it. Another little tip, if you hold down the space bar and click, you can drag the artboard around in Illustrator. It's the way that I tend to move things from one side of the artboard to the other. Anyway, uh, so we got the other base filled. Now we need to actually choke the underbase down so that when we print the colors on top of it, they lay over it instead of having the underbase actually kind of peek out from underneath them. The way we do this, or the way that I do this, well, let me start by saying there's a number of ways to do this. I have found that the way that I'm going to show you is just the most efficient and it gives you the most options with the artwork later on. You're not committing to a specific choke. You can adjust it as you need to. So. The way we are going to do it is by applying a process stroke to our spot color. Let's select the underbase, make sure it's all selected. Uh, before we do that, so you can actually see what we're going to do, and go back down to the separations preview, turn the CMYK colors on, just make sure everything is turned on for the time being. Okay, so you see the, under, the base popped back up, whatever. Alright, unselect it all. One more time. Go select the underbase, and come down here to the toolbar. And instead of having the fill in front, we want to have the stroke activated. So we're gonna click it and make sure it's activated because it will be in front of the fill. Now, instead of filling this with a spot color, we're gonna actually fill it with a process color. Any process color you like. So by applying a process stroke to this, all we have to do in the print dialog is turn the process colors off and then the underbase will essentially be choked down. Let me show you what I mean. This may be a little bit confusing, but you'll get it shortly. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is click the stroke thing here, and I'm just gonna select whatever color. Because my underbase is light gray, I'm just gonna use white just so you can actually see what it looks like. You know, this, it's a one point stroke. Now let's grab the magnifying glass and zoom in a little bit here. Okay, you see the stroke around it, right? Let's go back down to the separation preview and we're going to turn the CMYK colors off. Now, let's select this again. And just to show you what happens, let's, let's make the stroke bigger. Let's take this sucker up to a 10, 12, 15 point stroke. Notice how everything's disappearing? We've essentially choked this sucker down to nothing. So the red and everything would overprint so much, it would look, it would look really bad. But you see how flexible it is. Let's reselect it, let's take it back down to one point. Again, from my experience, as long as your press can hold pretty tight registration, you only need about a one-point stroke, and that'll give you all, all the underbase choke that you need. All right, so our underbase is done. Now, just for visual purposes, uh, you can drag it below everything just to verify that, in fact, it's not peeking out, blah, 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 whatever you want to do, however you want to deal with that. Uh, hopefully, this part has made sense so far. All right, and almost last, but certainly not least, is gonna be applying registration marks to the separation. It's, again, not as complicated as you think, so let's get into it. I have made another video, and you can click on the link below or the link in the description showing you how to create reusable registration marks. Again, I'm not gonna show you how to make these in this video. But click the link in the description for how to make this uh, print template. It has everything you need. Now I tend to just copy and paste the information that I've used, that I created here into the new artboards, but you can also copy the graphic from here and paste it into your, um, to your template. But for the sake of this one, we're gonna apply the reg marks to this artboard. Again, you're gonna create another layer and you're gonna call this one registration. Make sure the registration is highlighted and I'm gonna hit control V. And that will paste my registration marks that I created earlier into this graphic. And I'm going to drag them into the artboard here, somewhere. And then I'm going to grab all of my graphic, everything there, and I'm going to center this thing up using the arrow, the arrow keys, center it left, center it right, get it wherever the heck I want it. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. 
Now I'm gonna uh, edit my artboard just a little bit to give me a little bit more room. So this artboard is set up at 17 inches wide by 19 inches tall. Uh, I'm gonna just add another two inches to this. So we'll go to 21 inches just to give me some room to put the registration marks. Now, when you're using a printer, it's gonna print, especially if you're using roll media. So it's gonna roll out 21 inches of media. So you always wanna make sure to set up your artboard to save film, because that crap is expensive. You want to make sure your artboard is as small or as close to your registration marks as possible so that you're not wasting media. Just a real quick note though, in case you don't watch the other tutorial, we made these registration marks in Adobe Illustrator and then we fill them with the registration fill, which is right over here in the swatches. This little, the little thing looks like a target. I'm sure you've wondered what the hell that's for. Well, it's our registration fill. When you fill the object with this, it will print on every film as long as that layer is turned on. Now, if we turn it off like this, then it won't print on the films. But if you turn it on, you can see what will happen in the print previewer. We can turn all these off. It's hiding underneath all these colors right now, but if we move the other underbase to the top, you'll see the underbase registration marks are filled with the underbase color. This is our underbase. Now, if we turn that underbase off and we turn on the black layer, you'll see the black layer is filled with black. Uh, if you turn the black layer off and you turn the light gray layer on, you'll see that the registration marks are filled with that color. So hopefully that makes sense. I, I'm terrible ex at explaining stuff, so hopefully you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here. All right, and then we're just gonna quickly cover how to actually print these separations onto films using AccuRip uh, and some form of Epson printer. Check it out. The first thing I'll do is I'll get my underbase printed. So I'll turn everything else off, but you can keep it on. It doesn't really matter. This is the way that I do it. So that only my underbase and my registration marks are turned on. Hopefully you can see why. We'll go to file. We'll go to print. <clears throat> Again, for this whole deal to work, you need to have the AccuRip and you need to have some form of Epson printer. There's a series of Epsons that work with AccuRip, but you're gonna need one of them. Okay, so we're gonna select the AccuRip to Epson. Next thing we're gonna do is go to Media Size, we're gonna select Custom, and we're gonna uncheck Auto Rotate. That's all we need to do on this one. We're gonna come down here to Output, and instead of a composite, we're gonna select Separations. This is where you turn off colors, turn on colors. This is where you control what prints on what film. First thing we're gonna do is take turn off the process colors, which is the cyan, magenta, yellow, and process black. Do not mistake process black for Pantone black. You always want process black off. You want Pantone blacks. Don't want anything processed. Now, remember we filled the pro we filled the stroke on the underbase with a gray. As long as all four processes are turned off, that gray will not print. The only thing that's gonna print is the color we filled it with, which was a 701 Pantone. We're going to click print, and it's gonna shoot off to the printer. Now that this film has printed, we're gonna turn our underbase off, we're gonna keep our registration marks on, and we're gonna turn everything else back on. Okay, so now we have the rest of the graphic on and our underbase is turned off, right? So we're, no, we're printing the underbase now, we don't need it anymore. Now we need to get the rest of the information. Again, we're gonna go file, I'm gonna go print. Uh, we're going to Make sure that the uh, AccuRip to Epson is selected. We're gonna go down here to Custom, make sure Custom is selected, and uncheck Auto Rotate if it's still checked. Then the next thing we're gonna do is come here to Output. Uh, we're gonna come down, select Separations, and we're going to make sure all the processes are turned off, and make sure that the underbase is unselected this time, because we've already printed it, right? You might find that it's like this, but again, Let's say you print all these films and you only want to print the red. You can uncheck all this and it will only print the red film. Uh, if you need all three, but we, again, we printed the white underbase right here. So we just need to print the white film, or I'm sorry, we need to print the black film, the light gray film, and the red film. So only these three are checked. Boom, 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 okay? I hope you understand this. I don't know how I can be any more clear, even though this is where everyone gets confused, but hopefully you understand. Hit print. Holy crap, we made it through. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the print life. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so you're notified when I upload. Uh, and uh, 
share this on all your social media accounts because we're trying to grow the channel and your love will help and I need it and I enjoy you watching it all. Anyway, uh, take care, Print Fam. Peace out.